Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I have a fun video to tackle this time. So, I've been talking about, ever since I got my CKF Satori 2.0, that I would like to do a comparison between it and the Koenig Arius. So, it's time. I'm finally going to do it. Um, I've had this knife long enough to feel that I've really got a good feel for it, and obviously I've had my Arius for quite a while now. It's my second Arius. I'm very accustomed to this model. So, um, we're going to go through the typical kind of seven categories that I usually go through in these head-to-head -head videos, if you want to call them that. And, uh, yeah, I'll go through those real quick. I wrote down the categories. I may glance at this now and then just to make sure I don't forget any of them. Put that where I can see it. It's down there. So, if I look that way, <laughs> you know what's happening. Anyway, um, I go through these seven categories in each of these comparison videos. And they're categories that make sense to me. This is obviously completely based on my opinion. This is not a scientific exploration of these knives. This is just me going through and picking a personal favorite based on these categories. So, uh, the seven categories are looks, action, ergos, fit and finish, carry, cutting, and value. So, between those seven categories, uh, I'm going to do my best to not tie in any categories. Um, I've never had one come out as a tie overall anyways, but I think it's better to, to pick a winner in each category, if at all possible. Every now and then in, in specific categories, it's really just like, I don't have a favorite in that way. Um, but yeah, I don't think in this one there's gonna be a tie in any of them. I've kind of been thinking about it a little bit, and uh, there will be a winner at the end. So. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first category is looks. Now, both of these knives, I think, are gorgeous. The Satori, if you've watched my review of or any of the videos I've done on the Satori, you'll know that a lot of my uh, infatuation <laughs> with this knife stems from the way it looks. I think this knife is absolutely stunning looking. It's complex in the right ways. Uh, but it's, in my opinion, not overdone. Some people might disagree. It's an integral, which has a really cool look to it. The fact that the handle's all milled from one single piece. I love the finishing, that it's like slightly bronzed. Um, I love that it's all black hardware. I think the blade is one of the coolest looking blades that exist on folding knives as of this moment. It's just really cool looking in my opinion. I love the swedge, um, I love the fuller, I love the compound grind, I think the recurve looks awesome, I love the two-tone. It's just a really good looking blade, really good looking handle. This is one of my favorite knives in terms of its appearances out of any knife ever. Um, the Arius is also a knife that has always jumped out to me as looking really cool. I love the way the Arius looks. I think it looks fantastic. This one, I think, can also be a little bit of pol a little bit polarizing. I've heard a number of people say that they don't like the way the Arius looks. I dig it. Um, but if I have to pick between the two, at the end of the day, um, the Satori is going to win for me in the looks department. That was lefty and weird. There we go. Uh, so yeah, looks is going to go to Satori but I think they're both phenomenal looking knives. So obviously that one is probably the most opinion. Now yeah, they'll all be opinion, but that one's very opinion based, picking a winner based on looks. All right, so the next category is action. Um, the Satori has a very good action. As you saw with my left hand just then, you can fail this knife. Um, I, I think because it's an integral, the amount of lock bar pressure is a little different than you get oftentimes on knives that aren't integrals. Um, but I don't like have issues with failing on deployment on this knife. I usually get it just fine. And I like that there's multiple deployment methods because with that fuller, you can middle finger flick it. Um, in terms of like being drop shutty, yeah, it's drop shutty. <laughs> it's like, it's a very good bearing action, super smooth, glassy. It's all the things that you would use to describe a good action. However, the Arius has my favorite knife action of any knife that I own. It's just the way that this knife drops, but it's kind of controlled. It's not like it's just um, like loosey-goosey dropping. It like feels like a, a controlled fall the whole way. Uh, the detent is absolutely perfect for a flipper and perfect for middle finger flicking. It's just, it's phenomenal. It opens, it's my favorite knife. 
to fidget with, my favorite knife to play with, because the action is just phenomenal. So action is going to go to the Arius. Now ergos. Ergos um, on the Satori are quite good. This knife, I've had a number of people ever since doing my review on it ask me, like, hey, do you still love the Satori? Is it really that good? Should I get one kind of thing? And uh, my answer is always, yes, you should get one. I genuinely do really, really like it. It's one of my favorite knives. Um, but one thing that I always warn people about is that the ergos are, like, the, the handle is smaller than I imagined it would be before getting the knife. This is the Satori 2.0, by the way, so it's the little one. Um, this one is uh, tiny compared to the full size, the regular Satori from CKF. Um, but it's just, the handle isn't like teeny tiny, but it's much smaller than, um, than I imagined it would be. <laughs> and so, to, to be fair, when I'm talking about this knife to people and they're asking me, like, should I get one, I, I try to warn them that if there's something I can see somebody not liking, it may be that it feels too small in their hands. Now, for me, I love the way it feels. I genuinely like this knife in hand a lot. Um, it's very good in a variety of grips. Reverse grip is very good. Draw cut's very good. Saber grip is good. Hammer grip is good. Like, this knife is good ergonomically for me. But I wear a medium-sized glove. Fill it out real well, but I wear a medium-sized glove. And for me, it's like just the right amount to fill my hand. If it was any smaller, I'd feel like a little bit worried that I'd have enough purchase on the knife, you know? I, I like the way it feels for me. But if you've got really big hands, I can imagine that this is going to feel small in your hand. So keep that in mind. But like I said, ergos are very good. For me, it fits my hand really well. I feel locked in. There's not like obscene jimping all over the place. The little bit of jimping that is on here feels nice to me. It's just smooth. It's, it feels very good and very stable in my hand. That said, if you go back and watch my review of the Arius, you'll see that this is probably my favorite folding knife ergonomically, period. I just... There's no other knife quite like the Arius for my hand in terms of how much it feels like... Um, it, it feels like I took a handful of Play-Doh and squeezed it, <laughs> and then, like, you can release your hand, it'll hold the shape, and you can go right back into it, and it's, like, molded for your hand, right? This feels molded for my hand. It, it's not quite, like, going between my fingertips, like, <laughs> like Play-Doh would, but it's really, really just perfect in terms of its proportions and the fact that it kind of cuts in here and you get a, a nice narrower section of the handle but then it swells for your palm and for your back fingers and it just it fits so well into my hand I get two fingers up here in this groove the other two land on this flat the whole thing is curved the contouring on the scales the chamfering everywhere it is just exceptional ergonomically for me and I'd be willing to bet, because this handle is a little bit bigger, that for those people who have larger hands than I do, they'll still find that it's really good ergonomically. In fact, I know several people who have larger hands than I do, people whose hands I've shaken. <laughs> I know they're bigger than mine, and they love the Arius for its ergos as well. So I think the Arius is going to be the safer bet ergonomically for more people, um, and I just plain prefer it. Again, Satori ergos are very good, but the Arius just it wins. <laughs> it's exceptional for me ergonomically. All right, so we've done looks, action, and ergos. That brings us to fit and finish. Now this is an interesting one because both of these knives are remarkably well put together. Um, they both have some similarities in the sense that they're both uh, on bearings, they're both titanium, they're both frame locks, um, but there's a lot of differences as well in terms of how they're put together. Obviously, this one is an integral. This one is not. So here you have a backspacer. This one, there's no such thing as a backspacer. Um, they both have inserts for the lockup. Both of them lock up really almost identically. <laughs> if you look at how far over those lock bars are traveling, it's pretty much the same there. Um, but yeah, they both have excellent actions. They both drop shut while still being locked up completely solid. There's no play in either of them, forward and back, side to side, zero. Their tolerances are very tight in that way. 
Um, I feel like that's always kind of a, a marker of a true good action. Like some knives have a really drop shutty action, but then you go and you feel the lock up. <laughs> it's like there's play in it and that's why it's free falling because the pivot's not all the way tight. Um, these are, are as tight as they can be in terms of their lockup and are still absolute free fall drop shut knives. So yeah, I mean, when you look at the finishing on them, the finish on the Satori is like kind of stonewashed and has a little bit of kind of bronze anno going on, although it's muted, which I like. It's not like too bronze. Um, it's a good looking finish. It hides wear pretty well because it is stonewashed. Um, the blade finish on both of them, you've got like hand rubbed flats with these cool kind of like blasted bevels. Um, both have cool fullers, both have cool swedges. <laughs> like they're, they're both remarkably beautiful knives in my opinion. And when you look at the intricate details of each of them, they don't fall apart. They get better. Like the closer you look at either one of these knives and the more little things you notice, the better and better they get. But... I guess I just kind of have to go with my gut on it because, uh, like I said, they're both so good, but I do want to pick a winner. And at the end of the day, feeling both these knives in hand, maybe it's the contouring on the scales and, like, the amount of chamfering and the, the really, really fine details, but I do think the Arius is a, a notch above the CKF in terms of its fit and finish. It's not miles ahead. <laughs> this is a really, really well-built knife. Um, and they're different in construction, so it's kind of hard because, like, the fact that the CKF is an integral is, like, that's a, a, a level of niceness to me that isn't on here. But because this one isn't an integral, they're able to do things on here. Like, the amount of internal milling on a Koenig Arius is just remarkable to me. Um, what's also crazy is the Arius doesn't feel any heavier to me <laughs> than the CKF does, and it's a much bigger knife in terms of its, like, profile, right? And so the fact that the Arius, because it's not an integral, they're able to do all that internal work, like, I don't know, I just dig it. I'm going to call the Arius the winner. All right, next category is carry. So in terms of carry, this one's going to be pretty decisive, actually. I love the Arius. I love to carry the Arius because I love playing with it, because I love cutting with it, because I love the ergos, because I, I love the knife in so many ways. It goes in and out of pocket well. The pocket clip is good at keeping the knife secure, and I think it looks attractive. It's a milled titanium clip that's designed and, and fits the aesthetic of the knife, and uh, I like the way this knife goes in pocket for the most part. But my preference, and I say this all the time, is I prefer when knives carry deep. I like deep carry clips. I like for my knife to sit all the way in my pocket. This really doesn't. Um, the amount of knife that's going to stick out of your pocket is going to be about that much. Now, people who know knives are going to see that's an Arius, and so it's kind of cool to me that it's like, ah, you see, if you're going to see what's in my pocket, I want it to be the Arius, because it's my favorite knife, right? <laughs> like, I love this thing. Um, but I would prefer it if this knife carried deep. That's just, I, I like my knives to sit all the way in my pocket. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's very good as in terms of, like, the functionality of the clip. It absolutely works. I just wish it carried deeper and less knife stuck out of my pocket. Now, on the Satori, you have kind of the same problem. There's still a pretty good amount of knife that sticks out of your pocket compared to, like, a true deep carry setup. But this milled clip is a little more simple and... I don't know, I just find I have an easier time putting this in and out of pocket by a hair than the Arius, but the biggest difference is going to be how thin and how small this knife feels in pocket. This knife is remarkably comfortable in pocket. I think part of it's the integral, um, like the, the fact that it's that type of construction and just the way it, it feels in pocket, it's really, really comfortable. When you look at these knives next to each other, focus. Um, you can see obviously the, the footprint that is going to be in your pocket. This is way smaller when folded. Um, the Arius has good proportions. I really like the proportions of the Arius in terms of how much blade length I get for handle size. I think it looks balanced and nice. But the Satori is one of those knives that seems to like magically pack a longer <laughs> blade length 
than handle length into the handle. Like, it's not actually, obviously, that, that would be literally impossible to have more blade length than handle length on a folder without having tips stick out the butt end. Um, but it just, it's a lot of blade for the handle. And so because it folds up so nicely and it gets so trim and small while it's closed, it just, it's excellent in pocket. Truly, truly good in pocket. So the Satori is going to win carry. Um, not because it's lighter. In fact, they feel about the same to me. It might be a little bit lighter than the Arius. I'd have to put them on a scale and I don't even have a scale. So it's not because it's lighter. It's not because it's deep carry and the Aries isn't, neither of them are deep carry, but it's mostly because of the, the size and the profile of it when folded. It just takes up less real estate in the pocket. It's slimmer. That's a good thing. Um, so the next one is going to be cutting. Cutting performance is going to be an interesting one. Um, the Satori surprised me a lot in terms of how good it actually is as a knife <laughs> for cutting things. Um, I think looking at this knife, I always just kind of assumed like it's doing a little bit of artistic expression and oftentimes knives that are like really designed like this with such a crazy grind especially like you've got a flat grind up here and then a hollow grind for this primary bevel but it's kind of a shallow hollow grind it's not overly like contoured or concave or whatever you want to call it uh, but it's got this swedge and then the flat and then the hollow and these flats and then a like this blade shape is really complex and oftentimes I find on folders especially, that's just like, it doesn't end up being a very good cutter. It doesn't end up being very thin behind the edge when they do all that stuff. But here, I mean, it just, it cuts really well. It's very thin behind the edge on this bevel. And then up here towards the tip, it just carries a lot of strength. And it's a, a blade shape that actually, in use, I have found has been really usable. And so I like that about it. But, <laughs> the Arius is one of my favorite knives to actually cut with. Um, the Arius features a hollow grind, which is a really tall hollow grind. I love when hollow grinds are tall. Um, hollow grinds that are really sh like stubby and short, I find just get thick too quick and they end up not slicing as well as other grind types. But here, it's just, it's nice and thin behind the edge and it stays thin for a bit before it gradually comes up and then it's just a simple blade shape where you've got a fantastic cutting profile in terms of you've got some belly up here to the tip. The tip has plenty of strength for anything I'm going to do with this knife ever. And then you've got this nice flat section down here for slicing. And it's just a very usable blade shape. I love cutting things with the Koenig Arius. One thing I will say is um, I have noticed and I've seen it pointed out that Koenig tends to ship knives without like the greatest factory edge on them. In fact, some of them can be like a little bit on the dull side and they use a, a very, um, like the, the angle that they put on is funky compared to what most people prefer. I feel like my buddy Jason, he got his and it had like a, like a 23 degree edge bevel or something on it. I prefer more like 17 or 18 a lot of the time. Um, so this one has been sharpened and I've just been keeping it sharp by stropping it. The original owner who sold this to me is the one who put this nice mirrored edge on it. And this edge is phenomenal, but the factory edge, I'd probably give the advantage to the Satori because this edge compared to the factory edge I had on my previous Koenig, which I bought new, this one is sharper out of the box and the, the profile is, uh, or like the actual edge bevel, I think is a, a better angle than what they put on at Koenig. But anyways, if you have a sharpening system and you can just sharpen it, then <laughs> just put a new edge on it. Some people don't though, so it's worth saying. All right, so cutting is going to go to the Arius because the blade profile, even though the story is very good, I, I prefer the Arius to actually cut with. All right, so the last category is going to be value. And this one's an interesting conversation. Value always kind of is. But this knife, I'm in it for like right around 600 bucks. It might have been like 615 or something. Call it 600 bucks. And if you get a new Plain Jane Arius like this on a drop from a retailer, not paying secondary prices, but on a drop, um, you should be able to get into an Arius for about that still. Maybe it's 650 now or something. I don't know. But we're going to call this what I know I am in it for, <laughs> about 600 bucks. Now this knife, 
I did buy secondary. Uh, this one I did too, but I was lucky that the guy didn't overcharge me because most people who sell these knives secondary, they get marked up because they're really hard to come by a lot of the time and the drops sell out immediately. Anyway, this one I bought on the secondary at a discount compared to what they cost new. This knife new was $640. And I don't know about today, but even just like a month or two ago, I was looking and there were one or two retailers that had some of these in stock at 640 bucks. So 640 bucks new, I'm in it for less than 500. I got lucky, bought it from a buddy. That was great that I was able to get it for less than they retail for <laughs> um, by a margin, right? But if you're looking at these knives in terms of what the companies who make them charge for them, um, then they're really, really comparable. This plain Jane Arius at about 600 bucks, this one about 640 bucks. And like I already mentioned in a number of like categories, there are a lot of similarities in terms of what these are made of. They both have M390 blade steel. They're both titanium frame locks. They both have titanium components all over them. Um, they're, they're really well-made knives made out of absolute premium materials. This one's an integral which generally means more expensive. Um, but this one is made in the U.S., <laughs> which almost always means more expensive. And so, I don't know. I think if, I, if it really comes down to, like, value, with them being priced about the same from their new prices, I have to say that the Koenig, I think, is a little bit better of a value. If you can get a Koenig at what they cost new and, like, Secondary is its own animal, so I don't even necessarily want to go there. But on secondary, this knife might be 800 But if you can get it for the 600 or 650 that it costs from Koenig or from one of their retailers, then I think this knife presents a better value than this one. What's interesting, though, is this one on the secondary is less than it is for retail. This one is more than it is for retail. Um, if you can get this for under 500 bucks, then I think it's a closer fight, right? But it also, if I boil it down to what I think is most fair, talking about what they cost new, the fact that this one costs more than it did new, if you buy it secondary, because it's in high demand, and this one costs less than it did new, I think that's a pretty good illustrator of the fact that where their retails are set, this one's a good value. Now that, that scale doesn't always ring true, because I think there are a lot of really, really good knives that sell for less than table price or less than retail just because they're not as well known as others are. Um, like Olamix. Olamic knives, for some reason, are on the secondary, they're typically pretty heavily discounted compared to what they cost new, which has been awesome for me, who's bought all of my Olamix secondary. Um, but those knives, I, I think, are better than a lot of other knives that appreciate in value. And so that's a, a weird sliding scale. But in this case, I'm just going to... I'm going to say, I think the Arius is the better value. Again, in this category, not by a mile. I think both these knives are plenty of knife for the money if you're looking in this range. Uh, these are both past the point of diminishing returns on what knives should cost to be a good tool. Uh, both of these are frivolous luxury purchases, right? Like, neither of these are the Toyota Camry of knives. They're not point A to point B <laughs> vehicles. These are... Porsches and Ferraris. Like, they're they're very nice. I don't know. That's a weird comparison to make, because then, like, what are customs? But anyway, <laughs> that's where we're coming down to. So if I do the math real quick, let's see. Looks and carry were what went to the Satori. So two points for the Satori. And the other five went to the Arius. So that would have been action, ergos, fit and finish, cutting, and value. And, uh... Yeah, I think I accurately was able to get to where I think these knives should have come out. Um, the Satori is a really, really phenomenal knife. And I love it. <laughs> I, I enjoy carrying this knife. I enjoy using it. I enjoy cutting with it. It's just, it's a, it's a good, solid offering. And it makes me way more intrigued in CKF. I want to see more of the knives that they make because it's the first CKF that I've personally owned. Um... I love the design of this knife. I think it's striking. I think this knife, it just, it has a cool factor to it that is probably beyond just about any other folder I've ever owned. Like, the way this knife looks, to me, is absolutely incredible. But 
if I could only keep one of these, <laughs> the Arius is going to be the keeper, right? The Arius, even though it doesn't carry quite as well, doesn't look quite as cool, um, it still looks absolutely phenomenal, and it performs and fits me so well. And, uh, yeah, if you, if you want to hear me rave about the area so you can watch the full review of this knife which was from a while ago now um that i reviewed this knife but i just the area is still my favorite knife in my collection and so it would be weird if i had another knife beat it in one of these battle things um and it was still my favorite then it would be like why is it your favorite you know that's some real x-factor stuff going on but no shame the area wins five to two that said I'll reiterate, both of them are absolutely phenomenal knives. Uh, I feel like most people who are in the market to buy an Arius or a Satori um, are probably deep enough into the hobby that they may very well own both like I do. Like, <laughs> uh, it might not be at the same time that they get them. Like, I, I couldn't right now just go buy one of each of these. That's a lot of money, right? But... I think a lot of people who are in the market for these have a lot of other knives that are also in this price point and range and all that. And these are two knives that are phenomenal in the range that they sit in, and I recommend both of them. I have been recommending both of them for a while now. The area is longer than the CKF because I've just had it for a lot longer, but both phenomenal knives. Um, I don't know if the Satori will be a forever keeper. Um, I talked in my podcast recently, I don't even know that the Arius will be a forever keeper anymore because if, like, I get the chance at an OZ Roosevelt and, like, the person who has one wants an Arius for trade, then, like, I can get another Arius easier than I can get a, a Roosevelt, you know? So, like, there's a whole dynamic there. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. The only way I can see getting rid of either of these knives would be because I'm chasing something else. It wouldn't be because I've fallen out of love with these knives, because at this point I'm confident that I really, really love both of them. Um, so I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. But they're both worth a good amount of money, and so if something crazy comes along that I have a shot at, then they're ones that are potentially on the chopping block. That's the way I have to look at my collection these days. Anyways, this is a weird <laughs> way to end this video. Thank you all of you who've somehow watched all the way to the end of this. Um, I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you on the next one.